these guys seem to be standing 10 foot tall on the stage, you know, and playing this music that really, I was an Elvis fan, Elvis was the only thing in my life until I met the Beatles. And this music just, well, I could sit there for three hours and think maybe 10 minutes had gone by, you know, you just got so captivated by the music. Thank you, thank you very much, everybody. I mean, I was always going to be a drummer, I don't know, I just, from when I was a kid, I used to walk to school, there was a musical store, musical instrument store, and I used to look in the window, and I'd only want to look at the drums, you know. That was when I was, what, 12, 13. The first drum I ever acquired cost uh, $4, and it was just a big one, sort of skin bass drum, which I used to bang on, just drove everyone nuts, and I got rid of them. And the very first kit was everything, you know. I got the drums in January. I was in a band in February. I couldn't play, but I practiced with the band ever since I got the drums, and I think it's the best way. One time I went to my bedroom upstairs and tried that gig, you know, but once I was told, you know, keep the noise down, I never did it again. I just joined the band. I couldn't play, but I had the instrument. You know, I had the drums, and in those days, if you had the, if you had the gear, you could get into a band. It didn't matter if you could play it or not. Please, please me, that was a different planet, wasn't it? That was fabulous. And I remember we used to listen to Radio Luxembourg, and Jimmy Savile was on. And when um, Please, Please Me came out, John had told us it's being played on Radio Luxembourg, and we listened in, and Jimmy Savile played it, and then he said, well, I sure hope that pleases somebody. <laughs> <laughs> We brought it to George Martin. Hey, George, and we did. She loves you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the little six tight cluster that we got at the end of it. George said, No. He said, It's very corny. That end, a sixth. He said, It's like the old days. Da -da 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 -da. He said, It's very corny. He said, I'd never do. It. And we didn't understand. We just said, It's great, George. Such a great sound. He said, It's a sixth. We said, It doesn't matter. It's just great. And we just said, we've got to have it. We stuck out for that, are you corny or not? So George would give us these sort of parameters. He'd say, you mustn't double a third, or it's corny to end with a, a sixth. We said, we like it, man. It's bluesy. Classical people would say, no, you can't do it. So whenever I met that, I'd say, bloody well do it. We were in Paris one time, playing the Olympia in Paris, when uh, back at the hotel, and the telegram came through from Capitol Records of America to Brian. He came running in the room and said, Hey, hey, look, you're number one in America. Just, I mean, I can't describe, we just, hey, hey. We all tried to jump on Big Mal's back, and I remember running around the suite on Big Mal's back, hey, hey, and the, you know, that was it. Like, we just didn't come down for a week. <laughs> <laughs> 